Welcome everybody to the War and Peace Baseball Podcast. Here today with Alex Rudy, Farbod Markazi, Ray Estrada. I'm Alex Zui. How are you guys doing? You guys got to see your teams win some ball games over the weekend. Yep. Except me. Yeah, except for we you, won of course. One. I mean, that's that's a given. Angels fan does not equal yeah. wins for the most part. And uh, Mike Trout didn't play at all this weekend, really, right? With the hamstring. No, not really. Yeah. He's fine, though. Yeah, he's doing he all right. He feels good, good tomorrow. He's going to be in the lineup. I think that is uh, that's what you expect from Trout. Um, yeah, the Yankees fans, including myself and Rudy, are definitely enjoying life right now after we swept the Cubs and we just beat the Reds today. Um, how how are you feeling after that 18 inning game on Sunday though? That was quite the roller. Honestly, game. I'm more confident than ever before in this team. <laughs> kind of the first time, honestly, that I kind of think, wow, this team might actually just be a playoff team and not just be kind of like having a great hot start. Because I would have thought for sure they would have wilted under the pressure away at home, without having experience winning adversity this season, and Chapman, your best pitcher, blowing the save, a three-run lead too. Um, yeah, that, was ugly. that umpire was complete garbage, but that's still. Did a, you just say like, away and then followed up? Yeah, he was said that. away and at home. Oh, I'm retarded. <laughs> um, I was you get really the point. confused. You get <laughs> the point. That would be interesting, though. <laughs> you, you play the second half of the game in the other ballpark. That just seems, um, just seems right. fair, right? Yeah, but, yeah. but uh, I agree with you there. Yeah. Great win. I was really, really impressed. And uh, Yankees' ability to. You know, buckle down and rally and uh, keep the great Cubs offense at bay and all that talent, and then just use them a small ball to win the game. Um, the offense came back today with nine more runs. Gardner's heating up, and it just seems like whenever someone gets cold, someone else gets hot again, and back and forth. And uh, the pitching staff is doing enough. Severino, you know, Tanaka staying strong, and then you know, once we get to the seventh inning, the game is. I mean, the Yankees have a lead. It they're one of the harder teams to come back against because you know Clipper, Batances, and Chapman is one of the better. Uh, I would say three-headed monsters in the league. It's nowhere near last. I year's like I like how Clipper wedged his way into that three-headed. I mean, it's still level. it's not like he's nowhere on near like on Miller's level, but no. he's if he's your seventh inning guy, like you're in good shape. And we have Adam Warren too, who's very solid. And yeah, things things look. Outstanding. Sanchez is back and healthy. He looks good. I'm excited. Yeah, and you know, talk about 48 strikeouts in a single game. Well, I, it's basically two games when you go 18, but 48 strikeouts in a single MLB game. That's like five more than the previous record. And uh, man, that's a lot of strikeouts for both teams. I think the Cubs set like the single team record. Also, if you like pitching and you like strikeouts, that was a great game. So. That's that's the only other note that I wanted to add there. Um, if you had the patience to to see it to the end, then congratulations to you. And uh, yeah, so I think that's gonna conclude the uh, the Yankees portion of our podcast, which normally takes the weekly way, Yankees segment. Yeah, way too much time on this podcast, or maybe not enough time, depending on uh, your your team preferences. Because we love the Yankees, and we'll talk about them all day if we can. Let's talk about... Ray, it's okay. I'll, we can band together. I we, mean, we got this. Yeah, you and your L.A. teams. Uh, one I, LA I don't, team I don't consider... Yeah, I don't consider the Angels L.A. Sorry. Well, we have of uh, the Los Angeles Angels, but for some reason... Whatever. Well, I, I, call you, I call you guys the Los Angeles County adjacent Angels of Anaheim. That's, that's uh, too many. Not the, that's, that's, the Angels Angels of Anaheim, as you look like that. That's that, I, I, yeah, I, I, know, I immediately noticed that when they switched to Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, Literally the stupidest name in the history of professional sports. I'm sorry for that, but... I, but I, I, I completely agree. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. 100%. Anaheim Angels is actually a great name. Like, it actually works really yeah, well. No, Anaheim Angels works beautifully. Actually, yeah, the, that's not I just name. think the Angels could just use a rebrand. I know it's like really off topic, but I have to just shove it in here, like... My opinion, the Angels could really use like a, a rebrand makeover. I'm down. The Anaheim Back to the Periwinkle. I just mean? think there's a lot more they could do with the Angels, like as like a mascot, like color wise, and back back to the I Periwinkle. Think, I think it's yeah. I think it's Not time for. <laughs> I, I I don't like Good the direction. uniforms of what the 2000 uniforms. Yeah, the Periwinkle like, uniforms. Troy, so. like, like, the Troy Gloss uniforms. Yeah, I don't like those ones, but I like the. 
when they were the California Angels. Right. That was definitely the yeah. peak. Yeah, like so, uh, yeah, so s- screw smooth transitions, right? Uh, let's talk about Cody oh, Bellinger. That was the angel. There's <laughs> nothing smooth about this podcast. <laughs> no, that's... We, we, like we don't it. pretend to be what we're not. It, go, it goes against everything we stand for. We flow like a like what, a pile of gravel. What do we stand for? I don't, I don't know exactly. exactly. We stand for. I don't know. <laughs> we don't really stand for anything, honestly. We're just here. All right, well, yeah. let's get to the weekly Cody Bellinger part of the podcast then, I guess. I feel like we've been talking about him a lot lately, too, and he... Earned I mean, the NL player of the week. For text. Yeah, I mean, NL player of the week, you got to talk about him, right? Because he went off again, uh, had a g- grand slam over the weekend. I think he had another two home run games since our last podcast. Like, what is this guy doing? He's, he's going to play every day while uh, Adrian Gonzalez is on the DL as well. And What's going to happen to him when Adrian comes back? I haven't looked into that situation. He's going to play I, outfield and first base, hopefully. Yeah. How, how long is Adrian at, at once? Yeah, both at the same time, of course. <laughs> How long is uh, Adrian on for? Uh, I don't know, but uh, I think it's... Ten, he was on the 10-day yeah. deal. Ten day. He's on the 10-day. Now I'd say unless he like drastically cools down between now and then, I don't see how the Dodgers could send him down at this They're point. Not he's he's I, I, I way too that. good. I think it's a like, really struggle for him to be sent down. Like, yeah. Really struggle. And that's not, that's not impossible, but like, I, he, for as amazing at, as Judge is, and he's incredible, Bellinger just has that completely casual and de- and just deadly like approach and swing that's just he just seems mature beyond his years to the play like he's patient and he just does what he wants like he seems like he's a 30 year old in his prime not you know a 22 year old i'm not sure exactly how old it is but he's... um right up in the, right up in the majors for this first uh, taste yeah, he's 100% got a spot in the Dodgers outfield. I think that's – if they don't do that, then that's a serious problem. But, you know, he's got to play every day. He's he's there. He's up in then the league. Then does he's there. Tolls lose his spot? I mean, you one of them is going to be a first outfield. None of those outfielders have to play. Even, like, Peterson's not a must start. Like, Puig is not a guy who has to start every day. Like, they can, they're going to mix and match, I'm but, sure. But here, here's the thing. Like, all those guys, they're playing, they're playing like, decently well at this time. Yeah, they're playing like, good right time. now. It's, it's not like anybody is, like – it like it, it's hard to pick a guy who say okay you're not going to play every day because all these guys are playing well enough to play every day and you're going to have to choose one of them to be a fourth outfielder. I think you it's are a, it's understating a, how good Cody Bellinger is here because he's definitely going to. I'm not saying he's going to be the fourth spot. outfielder, but I'm saying out I'm saying out of Peterson, Puig, and Tolles, they're all playing pretty decently well. I, I mean, fine Peterson, players. They're not Cody Bellinger level though. I mean, even in terms of like, I, I know it's short, small, like small sample, I, but even I, like I I love Cody Bellinger. Let, let's not let's not just he's not he's not the savior yet. He's not the savior yet. We we Puig came in and set all kinds of uh, like rookie records and stuff. Don't don't. I, I, we've seen this before. I'm not going to get too high on him, but, but what if you uh, trade Puig? Um, that, was that was a pretty big thing last year. Do you think that's a I chance of coming back? If if he comes with more, if he gets maybe hurt again, I don't know if if he starts to struggle again. But he seems like he isn't much of a pain in the ass as he was last. No, season. I think that 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 send down a triple A and. Uh, that kind of got platoon towards together. the end of the year was very was uh, very good for him. Yeah, I mean, like, so. no, no contending team's gonna look to trade a player like Puig unless they get the right price. Obviously, I, I don't think any I don't think any major league teams are as high on Puig as they were, you know, probably when his trade value peaked when he was, you know, a stud a few few years ago or whatever. Um, yeah, I was trying to look up some some splits on Bellinger here. Um, because obviously the problem that you'd expect for a young left-handed hitter is against left-handed pitching. But, you know, so far in a small sample, he's doing okay against them. He has one extra base hit, um, 333 average against them, a um, couple walks there. Like, he's not he's not helpless against lefties. I don't think his minor league numbers would suggest the same. Um, I have not looked that up, but I will try to look that up possibly and make a note of that somewhere. But... I think Bellinger is, you know, even safer than most other other rookies that you'd that you'd look at. You know, you, why? What makes him any worse than you know Benintendi? Because Benintendi was basically a guarantee in all our minds, just you know, based on his profile, to have a great season for the Red Sox, and he probably will. He is so far. So, I think uh, I'm, Bellinger I'm has very to stay glad. is the point. I'm very glad I took him with in the with the last pick of the, our keepers draft. 
Yep, great pick right there. I, I yeah. d- don't think anybody would have expected him to be up as early as he was because of yeah, he's supposed to be up in June. Up this early. I mean, this it's, up in June. Yeah, we all like, said at the earliest it might be June. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he is 21 years old, so he is definitely a young. He's not, he's not 21. What? I'm looking at it right now. Oh, is he? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you doubt ESPN? Oh, he's born, yes. born, born in I Scottsdale, mean, actually, Arizona. Yes, a little bit. And uh, did not go to college, I guess, because he was drafted early on. Who is like his major league comp? Like is like f- like Freddie Freeman? Mm. Is that like too low? I think Freddie Freeman would be a generous comp for anybody at this point. Because I mean, uh, he's great, but like he's pretty fucking. I don't high. like the. Uh, I mean, maybe the numbers might look like it, just in terms of like a swing profile and athletic ability. I don't like that comp very much. Like the, everything yeah. else about it. Yeah. Yeah, because he's a he's a guy who can play outfield for the Dodgers. It's he's a different... right. That's true. He's a lot more athletic. Um, I it's hard. Will, it's hard Will for Myers, me. Myers to... maybe. Yeah. Like a lefty. Yeah, lefty Will Myers kind of. Bit. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, guy. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I, you don't see smooth lefty swings like that often enough in this in today's game anyway. So it's refreshing to say the least. Um, let's not, let's not, uh, ignore the other player of the week, though, who is not a rookie, but is definitely putting together a nice season. Yonder Alonzo for the Oakland A's won the AO player of the week. And this is a completely different case of, this guy's done, like, nothing his whole career, and now looks like there's hot, something different. He's matched his career high in home runs. Didn't he get, like, suspended for juicing a year ago or something? Or did I make that up? Um, I you swear might have you made that up. Let's, let's see if you're making that up. I don't remember it personally, but you know, I watched. I watched on MLB, uh, MLB Network today. Like Carlos Pena was doing a whole a- analysis of his swing changes, and he credit basically. He apologizes. Yeah. He, wait. Where is it? And the uh, he credited essentially all all to changing his like timing, his leg kick, and I think that definitely can make a huge difference in a player's timing ability. But Carlos Yonder Pena Alonso, did, or Yonder Alonso did. Carlos, like, Carlos Pena was showing how Yonder Alonso made that change, and it you can definitely tell the difference in form, but his swing is essentially the same as always he was, and so while his timing is greatly improved, I would not say this is Yonder Alonso finally, like, reaching his potential that he had, like, seven years ago as a pretty highly touted prospect, and I'd say this is, like, a pretty hot stretch because he's always seemed like a guy who pitchers... He's, that has been overwhelming at the play, and pitchers have known how to handle. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would say what was the uh, once kind of pitchers find out and discover the new way to make him wait again and take advantage of his leg kick, which really gets his he starts really early, so that he just times the ball once. I feel like once they just start throwing him, throwing him uh, away and outside, and mix in a lot more breaking pitches, he'll go back to what he was pre, pre previously to this. Yeah, I think that's we- how pitchers are already throwing against him. Right, like they're starting to throw against him already. Like that's, okay. a, that's what pitchers throw. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, I guess better at it. Yeah, I mean, Taking who, seriously is a threat. Who was he traded for again? That's what I was trying to. to was ask it? There. I think that late to have said. Was it? I think it was late house. Or it might have been. Interesting. It might have been for Anthony Rizzo too. I always get those trades mixed up because the Padres had both of them at the same time. Wait, no, Cahill. I don't think that was. Cahill was in. I think Cahill was in the Rizzo one, okay. or late house. All right, well, either way, Yonder Alonso is, you know, definitely doing something different. I'll say it again. I say it, like, every time, but I look at exit velocity and launch angle basically right away when a, when seeing a, a guy off to a hot start, and I like what I see so far. His launch angle is well, well above league average, and he's actually, like, hitting the ball decently hard. It's not, like, fluky Babbitt luck, it seems. His Babbitt must be pretty high, I'd, I'd imagine, but... Um, you know, in general, I like the, the launch angle trend. This bad bit's only 322, so nothing nothing insane right there. But Are you I looking at stats? I'm looking at Yonder Alonso stats, <laughs> so I hope that it does not count as cheating for stat game. They're pretty disappointed if Yonder Alonso is in the stat game, to be <laughs> Yeah. Again, I'm going to go ahead and say launch angle is probably the first thing that I look at now with hitters, you know, that are making... You know, big strides, or at least his launch angle was pretty similar though before this. I wasn't like unless Carlos Pena was a moron, which granted 
could be possible, but at least from what <laughs> I watched it. today, he didn't seem, I mean, he like literally specifically said it's the same launch angle than it was previously this year. Not yeah. trying to like discount you, but I'm just saying. Like, how do you uh, how do you check previous year's Statcast information? You go to only go to 2015. So yeah, it goes to 2015. Cool. On uh, what what are you looking at there? I, I I like how we're we're discussing how to how to find this stuff in the middle of the podcast again. Professionalism. Um, <laughs> it always come prepared. Again, can either of you pull up uh, his last year's launch angle? It, it, it's around 20 right now, which is you know reasonable. I think. That's a good target launch angle for a lot of major league players, and a guy like this who's not—it's—it's it's hard to say exactly because it was ten point three last year. So Carlos Pena it's, clearly it's doesn't know what he's it's talking doubled. about. Okay, so we, I'm sorry for—I'm—I'm I'm sorry, Carlos Pena embarrassed me. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you get for listening to Carlos Pena. Um, yeah. So Yonder Alonso launch angle—that's all—that's all you need to know, really. That's—that's that's all there is to it. Um. Yeah, let's go ahead and move on to our next little little story that we'll talk about here is uh in the news this past week Billy Hamilton agreed to a charity race against John Ross. Uh, he he proposed he proposed a race. John he, Ross isn't taking it. Oh, he's not taking it. Well, that, that's or, that's, that's, that's a bitchy thing to do. Well, yeah, well cuz he wants to race Usain Bolt cuz he thinks okay, he's but like, fast, but he's not going to beat Usain Bolt. Exactly. That's not the point. The point is that it's, you know, kind of cool seeing fast guys from different sports compete against each other i think the general consensus was that john ross would obliterate billy hamilton um i i i want to know for sure now though (laughs) like that's that's the thing i guess i guess that's not going to happen though but we can still talk about billy hamilton because he's still playing pretty hot center field for the reds right now and 19 stolen bases already that's uh you know it's billy hamilton obviously but that's a torrid pace right there i don't i don't even know I can't imagine the numbers of a full Billy Hamilton season. Um, it's something that we're not really, not really used to, to be honest. Uh, Rudy, I think you uh, you had a little more to, to say about Billy Hamilton's, you know, kind of revival here this season. Yeah, I would just say um, his, like you just said, his stolen base pace is incredibly impressive, and um, you know he's never really been healthy in his major league career so far. I don't think he really got a full healthy season of him as a matured player yet. So it's going to be good to see him finally in, in uh, his prime. Because uh, he's only played 100, he's only nearly full season with 152 games, and that was his rookie year. So this is kind of his first year uh, healthy. Um, this is a decent Reds team finally, which will hopefully give him some more opportunity to deliver on base and actually be you know, brought in as a, a run scorer and not just an empty uh, base dealer, but what I'm really more curious to see more than anything is if this guy can be an above average um, on base option for a whole season. His highest OBP in his career was 321 last year, which is really nothing to brag about. And It's pretty awful you know, for a leadoff hitter. Yeah, uh, this type of player, this speedster, whose main weapon is their speed and not really anything else, um, I wouldn't say he's a particularly popular type of player in the modern uh, baseball high strikeout, high, high power market that we're in. Um, and I think it's really difficult to succeed, honestly, positively offensively, without having at least some pure hitter skill at the minimum. His defense is great and all that, but I mean, when you think about it, he's kind of in a class of his own. There's really no one like who is competing with him. At who's you know who's a above average player, I would say, who has this type of a makeup, and uh, I'm really curious to see if he can put it together to kind of take another leap, or is this just the guy he is? Which uh, I mean, could be a lot. You know, the Reds' future could be tied a lot, and if you know, is he could just gonna forever be a complimentary guy who's incredible on the bases and in defense, but just doesn't get on base enough to honestly really make much use of that. Or can he take the next step and you know, be also an, you know guy who actually gets on base considerably and is actually an effective leadoff hitter. Well, yeah, and I'll try to throw some names that, you know, kind of fall into that category there. One of the most obviously close comps is Draw Dyson, who, you know, obviously we Isn't, think of his speed yeah. first, but now this year actually has a regular role in the outfield, which he never really had before. Um, Not a particularly great player, though, I would say. No, it's a similar profile, doesn't hit 
yeah. for a great average or on base percentage like you should like you'd imagine that a speedster like him would ideally do but you know he's gonna steal plenty of bases and i think the defensive aspect of it is you know the main attraction there it's good having speed like that's gonna keep keep you in the lineup because you're gonna have some really really good defensive war numbers for the most part and uh, both those guys are excellent excellent defenders both of them are um i think uh you know you look at guys like d gordon when he had really good seasons that's what you look for in your when you're kind of like scouting that that next breakout speed player like what what how can you use speed to make yourself a superstar and that's just the way you gotta look at guys like d gordon yeah and uh apparently use peds i guess that's that's part of the oh yeah that's part of the requirement um no, well, Barry but, Bonds is a hitting coach. I mean, yeah, it was probably just in his like his pre-workout smoothies or something. And you didn't even know. Yeah, his pre-workout smoothies. <laughs> you you don't have those? You don't have pre-workout smoothies? <laughs> Nothing. You're doing it wrong. Pre-workout, for sure. I don't yeah. take those, but my roommate's the oldest one. <laughs> yeah, but you he's know, taking that way. The <laughs> way. The way. The way. He suspended eighty games for way protein. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but D Gordon. You know, in that in that great year where he won the the bat, I think he won the batting title, right? Or am I mistaken? I'm pretty was sure it, he did. Well, he hit 333 he in 2015. 2015, 2015, yeah, I believe he won the batting title. Yeah. And not a great, not a great on base percentage considering that, only 359. But you know, it's it's That's awful. It's it's utilizing that speed to improve your batting average. Obviously, guy that can hit a lot of balls in the ground and get a lot of base hits out of it, and that's something that we saw a lot more in the other you know, previous decades of baseball and all that small ball type of stuff is obviously going down the drain for the most part, but then it's all about finding a way to make to make use of that speed to actually like make your numbers pop and make yourself a valuable player. In the in that in that season Gordon had with a three thirty three average, still just a four point nine war season, which is you know, it's a it's a decent player it's a decent position player that's nothing to brag about by any means um but it's amazing because you look at a guy with you know a power tool that's you know probably the same i guess you could say an 80 grade power tool probably looked at in a little bit different way than a guy with 80 grade speed and yeah i think that's just something to keep in mind um where could the next real like speedster come from and how would they be able to put it all together trey turner is like the best case scenario player for for like for a five tool player. I mean, Mike Trout obviously has a lot of speed, but Trey Turner is a fifty stolen base kind of guy that does hit for average and has hit for power. Um, and I guess that'll do it for my my Trey Turner praise for the podcast. Yeah, so I like how you found a way. The, the, I will the always Trey find Turner a way. I will always that. always find a way. And Trey Turner well is. Done. I will. Very smooth. I will make sure to say that he is in fact the same caliber speed as Billy Hamilton, D Gordon and those guys. That's that's some blistering speed he's got there. I mean, if you want to throw out other speed guys, you know, Keon Broxton, Byron Buxton, a couple other obvious ones. Um I I can't think of any more off the top of my head even. Um You just said obvious. Those are so those are some other, you know, guys who were known for their speed first, I would say, right? I mean, yeah. that's what I mean when I say obvious. I I I mean their, uh, their yeah, profiles like make them appear as a speed player. Trey Turner has so much else going on for him that you, you don't think of him as a speedster like you do Billy Hamilton. But, uh, yeah, that segment basically is to say that Billy Hamilton is having himself a nice season so far. And I think and that he's not as good as um, Trey Turner. Of course. Nobody is. Nobody. Nobody is. Nobody ever will be, apparently. Um, all right, let's go ahead and move on to our stat game for today. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, <laughs> was that intentional? No, I can't. Even, <laughs> no, I, I I was waiting for someone. Okay, all right. He he needs an introduction. Have, A man who needs an introduction. <laughs> um, I I have five stats. Um, do you want me to name them all off, or can you guys see them? Just um, do it one at a time, like we normally do. All you've right. Been here for the a while, first right? stat. What? Well, you've been around for a while, right? You've been around. Yeah. This. Okay. But I normally am on the other side winning these. Um, Not today. 
who, who, what hitter in all of um, baseball has seen the most pitches? Um, yeah. So that's total, not per at bat. That's total, not per. Like total, not not. It's not like per at bat. It's total, okay, okay. like pitches they've seen hmm. all all year. Hmm. Yeah, I think Joe, uh, Joey Votto. I was gonna say that. No, I think I'm gonna go ahead and use that as an opportunity to say that I think that is wrong because Joey Votto has been swinging at a rate way higher than his career average in at least in the month of April. That is something that I did know from before today, and uh, I guess I'll hear what if I'm right about that or not based on Barbo's <laughs> answer. How, I said no. You? Okay, it's not. There you go. Um, yeah, I, I thought I'd throw that in there. Another interesting Joey Votto fact. Um, but, but for my guess, I will go ahead and say, um, I don't know, I'll go ahead and say Mike Trout. Why not? No. Okay. Paul Goldschmidt. Paul Goldschmidt's fourth. So, I is mean, good or bad? Well, is Mike, that... <laughs> Mike Trout, Mike Trout is on um, 22nd. And Joey huh. Votto isn't. I can't find him. I uh, win. Uh, well, Rudy uh, actually won without um, without first, piggybacking. First is um, Jose Bautista. That is shocking beyond belief. Wow. <laughs> it's not. It's not <laughs> shocking. <laughs> but this year, six hundred twenty-five <laughs> pitches. He's seen six hundred twenty-five pitches. Where the second place has seen um, six oh nine, but he's batting one sixty-nine hmm. versus the three oh two batting average of second place. Man, who's who's second place? Chris Bryant, Kyle Schwarber. I should have oh. guessed Chris Bryant. I know he takes a lot of pitches. Um, yeah, that's a good one. So Rudy gets the point. Yes, he does. Yep. Um, shakalaka. Um, <laughs> another shocking okay. development. Uh, the next one is number who's first in range factor among first basemen. And that's just defensive range. No, nothing more. Yep. Nothing more to that. Okay. All yeah. Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt is sixth. Um, Will Myers. Will Myers is third. Ooh. Uh, uh, I almost Eric. I always went with him too. Eric Hosmer, I guess. Eric Hosmer is fourth. Aha! Oh, <laughs> Victory. Um, first place is Mark Reynolds. Oh my! What? <laughs> How could that be he's, true? He's quick, he's quick <laughs> as a cat over there. He's quick as a cat. These sound like bizarre facts. Like you're just kidding that these are the guys who are number one. Like what? <laughs> Mark Reynolds yeah, is, no, no, no. you know, third baseman converted to first base. I believe it. Mark like Reynolds, not, yeah. Years, yeah, but not first. 70 years old. Has he ever won a golden <laughs> glove? There's no way Mark Reynolds. He's a, he's a try to guess who's second. This one doesn't count, but try to guess who's second. Guess who's second? Um, Jose Abreu. Under Alonzo. <laughs> Alonzo's not there. Abreu's not there. Okay. Carlos who? Adrian Gonzalez. Oh. No. Okay. Um. Let's see. Brandon Belt. That's another good guess, I guess. Brandon Belt's not there. We'll Brandon Belt is not in the top ten. Yeah, he's, he's walked he's off again. By Anthony the way, Rizzo. Um, Anthony oh, Rizzo is five. All right. Um, he how many him. how many more guesses are we gonna throw out there? Greg Bird. Well, well no, I'll just Greg say Bird. number two is um Logan Morrison. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? That? I mean, I guess he's a convert. He's an outfielder too, but still, like, <laughs> neither of those guys would I ever associate with their defense being like their skills. Like, hey, wow, it's, I, really it's range though. The point that's is, the I won. That's that's all there is to it. I mean, does their range <laughs> imply your defense? No, I mean, you. No, no, they both have negative base, defensive wars. A little bit. They have negative defensive wars, but they have the highest ranges. That's bizarre. That's <laughs> that, really means they can, that means Mark they can get to a lot of balls. They don't point take four. a lot of balls. Do they just drop balls thrown to them at first base? Yeah. Then <laughs> they're <laughs> only much. good at reaching um, balls and nothing <laughs> else. That's like so bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I. I. Yeah. Um. All right. That's so actually probably won. the most interesting stat we've ever done in this game. Yeah. yeah. It's just interesting how it doesn't correlate at all those two things when logically you would expect them yeah. to be directly correlated by the way in an 11 year career mark reynolds only has 8.5 career war what <laughs> and he had like he had like 240 plus home run seasons that's really well, impressive. yeah but he leads the strike year leads the league in strikeouts I, I, every season I'm, he I'm plays saying, the whole though, season. regardless though like even then like that's still impressive 
and he was 20th in MVP voting in 2009. No gold gloves for him. <laughs> That's, those are his only credentials, I guess. Yeah, you, I didn't even know what right. <laughs> I guess it's I think one, one, one of that. zero. All right. Um, highest batting average against for a pitcher. Highest or lowest? Which one? Highest. Like who's like who, who's giving up the most? Who? Yes. Who's bat? Like. Oh, so we're talking about it, bad pitchers. It, it was what I thought. We no, 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 no. <laughs> I was not okay. expecting that at all. If I'm a wait, wait, pit- wait, let let explain himself. Highest batting average against like, um, who has? I don't know how to explain it. It's, what it's pitcher gets self-explanatory the most? Yeah, which what pitcher gets shelled? Which yeah. it would be logical okay, to think yeah. that it, we'd be thinking of the pitchers who have the lowest batting average against, right? Okay, whatever. Yeah, but what pitcher gets shelled the most? Just yeah. Um, jeez. Uh, mm. I'll say Kevin Gosman. He is um. 95th out of, out of 102. So, close. <laughs> In which direction, though? <laughs> oh, I'm looking at the last place ones on the ESPN. Okay. Why did you go first? I don't know. Why not? <laughs> uh, is this relievers and starters? Or... Um, I'm only seeing starters on okay. this list. So. Right. Just one. Hmm. Uh, Blake Snell. That's a good guess right there. Um, I need a second. Just I don't like think. I'll see him in the bottom. Oh, he's 65. God damn it. Oh. No. Opponents are batting 261 against him. Opponents are batting... Um, that's, that's not like as high as I thought it would be. <laughs> 299 against Kevin Gosman. Jesus. Wait, 299? Yeah. Wait, so... Wait, am, so I'm, I'm The winning. lower on the list... Wait, so the, lower yeah. is worse? It's like golf? No, no, no it's like, that's okay. the opposite of golf. God damn it. Here's, Barbo, how, I, too here, here's how for both for both looking at the list, like the top is still the best pitcher. So yeah. the higher the number you hear, so, the further down so the list the he is. And that's your one. Pick pitcher is the, the winner. Is is the yeah. one that you want. Oh, yeah. I thought my guess was awful just based on that, but I guess it was pretty good. No. Okay. Yeah. Rudy, who you, you got? Had, uh I don't understand it. So what are we trying to do? <laughs> I'm like I'm like totally. What pitcher? Can you explain it one more time? What pitcher is giving up the mo- like the most hits? Like who who has the highest batting average allowed? Starting pitchers. Yeah. Uh, who's been really bad? <laughs> Ubaldo Jimenez. It's always a good one. Um. Let me try to find him. If he's I'd be really ranked. impressed if he's actually not ranked at all. That'd be pretty shocking. Well, I think this is all qualified pitchers, I'd imagine. Yeah. If it goes to 102. He's not qualified? No, if it goes to 102, I'd imagine that, like, he's on there somewhere. Starters. Although, it doesn't sound like it. He's he's not... He's I'm, not try- I'm trying to find him. He's lower than 95, right? He has a 6.58 ERA in six games. It seems like he would be somewhere on there. God damn I guess not. <laughs> Let me try to find him. Is, did I win? Can you at least tell me that much? Um, you were the I, least yeah, awful. You 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 won. Yay! Uh, the the highest batting average against is Adam Wainwright at three seventy one. Oh That's God! Sad. Wow! That's really high. He's given up ten doubles and seventy five total bases. Of his career. Huh? That is. Yeah, you would run. He's okay. definitely in the hall of it. Who are some other notable names up there in this list that would shock? Would be shocked. Josh Tomlin is. Josh Tomlin. I. I mean, I don't know if you'd be shocked with Josh Tomlin, but he's, um, given up a batting average of three twenty five against. Uh, Jordan Zimmerman three eleven. Oh, that's a good. Yeah, that's a mm. an obvious one. Um, Stroman two eighty seven. Oh really? Huh. Wow. Tana- Tanaka two seventy one. Interesting. All right, well, let's go ahead and move on then. Um, oh, the next oh one. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I know I said that, but I actually, actually do want to know who has like the lowest batting average against, which is what I was prepared for. Yeah, that's what oh, I was. It's going to be some guy who pitched like one inning, right? Well, I mean, it's probably qualified. It's qualified starters. Qualified starters. Uh, that's, why, that's why I clarify, because if it, like, you could have had a really bad reliever up there who pitched like one inning. Probably later. Kershaw, right? Or, 
Or it would have been Jeremy Guthrie. Um, wait, like the best one? Yeah, is, yeah who's uh, the... Irvin Santana at one point. That was going to be my guess. Fuck that guy. It's so bullshit. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be a year. I'm so tired of it. <laughs> I'm over his... And like, then Chris Sales, yeah. number two. Oh, okay. Dan, Dan Straley's number th- what? three. What? Dan Straley's wow. number three. Dan Straley. He's tied with Dallas Keuchel. Ooh, mama. Uh, then wow. Scherzer... Then Ian Kennedy. Kershaw's not in the top five. Jesus. Kershaw's giving up some hits this year. Kershaw is 17. Man. All yeah. right. Giving up a batting average of a high batting average of 210. Man. Oh, what is, I'm glad what I asked that. <laughs> I think he's fine. What a, what a bench warmer. <laughs> I think he's fine. Um, Drop okay, him immediately. The next one is, so there's like five guys, one, two, three, four, five, six guys tied for um, – Second in high most intentional walks. I want From a hitter? two of those names. Yeah, right. hitters. Okay. Cool. Well, Mike Trout has to be one of them. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, I like that. I win. Bryce Harper and, and are you saying two um, names? Yeah, say two names. Bryce Harper's not on there. Oh, we're all really? saying two. So names. You lost one person. Um. Yes. Hmm. Mike Trout is, so Rudy, I need another one from you. Yeah, wait, 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 hold on. I, uh, I'm thinking. Uh, one of mine's going to be Freddie Freeman. Uh, uh, Freeman is tied for first with Bryce Harper. Tied for first? Wait. Yeah. You said Harper wasn't on the list. He wasn't in the in the top. T- he wasn't. Oh, so we lose because track- we didn't get the number two guy? Yeah. What? No, I, I refuse. Wait, I don't understand. <laughs> okay, What are fine. you saying? Bryce, wait, Harper, Bryce Harper and Freeman are tied for first. Oh, wait, Bryce Harper or Trout? What? Guys. You said Trout was there. I, 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 want, I want the guys that are t- I want two guys that are tied for second. This is a... What? That, wait, 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 wait. We got that the two not highest not ones. how you explained it. We got the two highest yes. ones. I demand credit for that. Okay, you got the two highest ones. Cool, but that's not what I asked for. So I got it cr- sounded like so that's I what win. I asked Jesus for. Christ. I win, though, right? Uh, I win. <laughs> Rudy, you, you guessed one of them, though. <laughs> But that's There's, the most so far. So wait, we're supposed to guess who's tied for <laughs> second or technically seventh behind these guys. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that was not clarified. George Springer. No. Do I, so that means I still win, though? <laughs> you know, I mean, you have, Why do we get credit for... This is, this you is didn't awful. tell us who the top six were. You have more people guess than right. those guys. So we, we have one more guess each. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Um. By the way, first and second place are tied. I mean, are um are separated by one intentional walk. I that will. Uh, I will guess Buster Posey. Posey is not one of the six. Okay. Whatever. I got the top uh, guy. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Rizzo. Rizzo is one of the six. So oh. I guess Ray and Rudy yeah. tied. Um, I, I, that point I wanted I guess to point the guy out. Actually in first. I wanted to point out. Um, <laughs> Did Rudy get Colton two names? Wong and Jordy Mercer. Colton Wong was it? and Jordy Mercer. Jordy yeah. Mercer still plays. <laughs> exactly. Well, that's. I guess that's that was worth learning. I, I guess. All right. I, anyway. I didn't want to know Jordy Mercer was still a regular contributor in the major leagues. I, I was better off without knowing that. <laughs> oh shit! We're <laughs> I lost my stats. Hold up. Oh god. Well, oh, there's good. one more, anyway, isn't there? Yeah, it's um. Let me let me find the stall oh, for Farboon. R- you want to talk about Trey Turner? No. Yeah. Let, let me let me pull up some Trey Turner stats for us. Well, in the meantime, <laughs> that's that's what I <laughs> I read them every night before I go to bed. Who? Which one of us is your best man at the at the wedding between you two? That's what I want to know. Is it which? Wait, which one of us is the best man? I don't, I don't like, understand. Like which of us? Oh, which that one of you guys? You. None of you. You guys are all mean to me about him. The... None of you believe <laughs> that's, him. That's disappointing. Yeah. But fair. Screw who, you guys. Who is um second among um Stop third asking baseman. for the second. God yeah, damn yeah it. stop asking for second. Just... <laughs> the first place is too easy. It's Justin Turner. Um, <laughs> that was... <laughs> God, that is not easy that, at all. That is not he's easy. A, he's are a very for, obscure for, good for player. Ray, are you doing this on purpose pay. just to I, never I, have to I would, I would, I wouldn't have guessed uh, Justin Turner. I didn't guarantee you that Ray doesn't think of Justin Turner very often as one of the guys to answer these questions with. Well, okay, it's among third baseman, so 
averages. Well, I, I have a yeah, feeling Dustin that for both... Turner. <laughs> <laughs> just for Turner. Congrats, you got first. I have a feeling uh-huh. he's doing this on purpose just to never have to host this again. That's that's my theory. <laughs> that does, that does, <laughs> I, I just want to play it. When, when, the, when the Mark more. Reynolds stat was stated, that's how I knew. And Logan Morrison, that's how I knew. That's what, that's what his intention was. I was trying to fuck. I was, I was trying to confuse Rudy so much. Uh, okay. You're succeeding very well. I congratulate you. Thank you. So his highest batting average among third basemen? No, second. Yeah, other than, ju- uh, yeah, yeah, other than Justin Turner. Turner. Yeah. So he was technically easy. highest. Um, Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant is fourth. Eugenio Suarez. He is third. Yay. Damn it. Chase Headley. He is ninth. Aha. Damn it. I win. Did I so win stack gets game? A point. Yeah, yeah, you, you did. I got three categories. Yes. Um, Second highest is Jed Jerko. Batting 337. That is definitely very surprising. Color me intrigued. Yeah. Um. And Ray, I I just thought you would know because Turner's batting three seventy six. I knew I knew he's hot, but like I, I mean I know he's hot because he's on my fantasy team. But I I mean he wasn't the first guy who popped in my head when he said the that first guy like should be really of, obvious. That sounds like an admission of guilt to me. Yeah, what do you mean? that's what I heard. That's that's the way I saw it. All right. I didn't know he was hitting three seventy six. <laughs> well, now you know. There you have it first. How's that? I know, and I'm very happy. Doing? What? What's that? Huh? I say, how is that fantasy team of yours doing if you don't know he's do- like hitting 376? Today wasn't very good, but <laughs> I mean. There's always hope. It's a long season. Yeah. Yep. All right. So that's that's our stat game for today. I guess I'm the new, I'm the reigning champion for the first time in God knows how long. Where's the leaderboard right now? It's it's somewhere. Like I don't know. For, I'm like, I'm like and oh, the rest of I'm us. I'm 0 2 and 1. Yeah, I'm two. I'm what? I'm two and one. I won a game. Okay. That's that's all I know. Um, I I know like Rudy and Farbo tied the first the first time we did it this year. That is correct. <laughs> all right. Then. Yep. Uh, any final thoughts before we wrap up the podcast? Cody Bellinger is insane. Insaner than Trey Turner. I I I. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and, and the Angels you say need Trey Mike Trout one man. more time. Trey Turner. I'll take I'll really take Bellinger over see, Turner. I really just I'll, I'll take Bellinger over Trey Turner any day. Wait, I really just wanted to see what Rudy would do though. What, what I just you? said if you said him, I didn't say I would do anything. I just said oh. if he says more time. Well, I did. It. So take that. All right. Uh, yeah. So that's gonna do ah. it for today. Thanks for joining us. As always, we would very much appreciate any feedback you have for us. You can tweet us at wpb underscore podcast. Uh, please check out our website too. The link for that is down below. We'll have all our podcasts and some articles on there as well, so be on the lookout for content there. And, you know, feedback any other way um, that we leave in the description. And this is also available on iTunes, YouTube, and SoundCloud now. So make sure to subscribe and follow on those platforms. All right. That is all for today. Thanks for joining. As always, Farbode.